Happy holidays from Flurn. Today, I'm gonna show you how to create a snowflake brush in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today we've got a very special Happy Holidays episode for you. I don't know why I just did that in a leprechaun voice, but <laughs> nonetheless, we're gonna show you how to create an awesome snowflake brush in Photoshop. This is super simple to do, and you can use this brush for things on your website, illustrations, holiday cards, you name it. This snowflake brush has a ton of uses. We're gonna start off with a stock image of a snowflake. Now we're using Adobe stock, but you can find any image of a snowflake will totally work. Next, you wanna create a new document with just the snowflake and then turn it into a brush preset. Then we're gonna go in and show you how to change your brush options to make it look like one snowflake is complete blizzard of snowflakes. We'll show you how to save your brush out so you can use it in the future. And finally, we're offering this for free on flurn.com. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So here's our image from Adobe Stock. Now you can find your snowflake anywhere you can find on the internet. Just make sure you have the rights to actually use it. And when you're creating a brush preset, you don't want your brush to be really, really large because that can slow down Photoshop. I would recommend making it about a thousand pixels wide. So let's go ahead and check on our size here. We can go to image and then down to image size. And here we can see we're at 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. So let's go ahead and turn that five into a one. Here we go, it's gonna change right down there because we have our width and our height locked. Let's hit okay. And we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so now our document is 1000 by 1000 pixels. The next thing I wanna do is go ahead and turn this black and white because we're creating a brush shape preset. So to change my image to black and white, we're just gonna to go to image, down to adjustments, and then we're gonna go all the way down here to desaturate. It's just gonna take away the color. There we go. Now, really what we want here is a pure white background and a pure black snowflake. Now, you could make this snowflake black in a million different ways. I'm just gonna do a levels adjustment on this layer, and it's gonna be very simple. So let's hit Command L, which brings up our levels. Now, here with our levels, we can choose our black point, our gray point, and our white point. So let's go ahead and click our white point on our background, make sure that is 100% is actually white. Let's click on our black point, and right here on our snowflake. And that's gonna make sure that that is black. So this is exactly what we want. We got a black snowflake on a white background, and that's exactly what you want for your snowflake brush, or any brush for that matter. If you're gonna define a brush shape, just make sure the brush is black and the background is white. All right, now it's time to go ahead and turn this into a brush shape. So we're gonna go to edit, and then down here to where it says define brush preset. Let's go ahead and click there. We can see our snowflake right there, and we're just gonna call this snowflake. All right, hit okay, and we're good to go. Now let's go ahead and switch to another document here. This is one that we've already got prepped because it's gonna be perfect for adding snowflakes. Now, we're gonna create a new layer, and I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool, and it's gonna automatically show up as my snowflake that we already created. So if I use just white to start off, or snow usually white, right? So. I can just click, and as I click and drag around my image, you see this is what we've got. So this isn't exactly what we want yet. I do have the shape of my snowflake, but it's not serving me yet, because it, it just looks like this when I draw around. So we're gonna hit undo a couple times, and I'm gonna show you how to change your brush settings to make it actually look like a blizzard of snowflakes. So to change our brush settings, we're gonna go to Window and down to Brush. There we go. And we can see a little preview of what our brush is gonna actually look like here in this window. So you can see if I click and drag around, yep, it pretty much looks like that. Okay, now there are a few things we can change here. The first thing we're gonna look at doing is spacing. Right down here on the bottom, you can space these snowflakes a little bit further apart. You can see here it's like one continuous brush stroke, and there we get a little bit farther apart. Cool, already a lot better. Now, the next thing I want to do is click on Shape Dynamics. This is gonna allow me to change things like our size jitter, which is gonna allow some of these snowflakes to be large and some of these to be small. You can see right there, some are large and some are small. So as I paint around, you're gonna see, there we go. And the idea is here to get like a lot of variability. I don't want these all to look the exact same. All right, let's hit undo there. Now the next thing we can do is change our angle. Again, these are gonna fall at different angles, right? So we can bring our angle jitter up. There we go. 
different angles, which you can kind of see. <laughs> We're gonna change our roundness jitter as well, and this is gonna make it look like they're falling at different angles. Like actually, like, you know, one was this angle, and the other is that angle. It's the <laughs> worst explanation of angles. Just look down there and you can see what's going on. All right, so we'll bring some roundness jitter in there as well. And now when I paint this around, you can really see that it, we do have quite a bit of variability in our snowflakes. Okay, looking good. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is click on scattering. And this is going to create a bunch of snowflakes. So I'm gonna scatter this all the way out. And we're gonna click right here where it says both axes. So let's make our brush a little bit smaller. And you can see as I paint around, now we see we've got a crazy scattering of snowflakes. And this is just one click. I've just clicked here and dragged around and the scattering is taking place, it, it's basically taking care of everything for me. Now from here, we're pretty close, really. There are things like maybe I want these to be spaced a little bit farther apart so we could go to back to brush tip shape and I can bring up my spacing, okay? Let's try, see how that looks. There we go, now they're a little bit farther spaced apart, which looks pretty good. All right, we could also try adding our color dynamics. Now, if I want my brightness jitter to go up, some of these are going to be brighter and some of these are going to be darker if we wanted to do that. All right, we can also turn on our opacity jitter. If so, we want some of these to be a little bit opaque and some of these to be fully visible, there we go. Now we can see some of them look like they're kind of like a little more transparent. Maybe we'll bring that down a little bit less. Some of these are a little more transparent and some of these are fully visible. There we go. That looks really cool. All right, guys, let me bring our opacity jitter down just a little bit more. All right, I like that, that looks really nice. Some good looking snowflakes there. Okay, so what we have now is just a collection of snowflakes. Now, we have our brush is pretty much ready to go, but we wanna do this in a couple of different layers. We've got some snowflakes that are gonna be close to the camera, which need to be large, and we've got some snowflakes that are way far away, and those need to be small. So we're gonna do those on different layers. All right, let's start with the snowflakes that are far away from the camera. So for this, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna right click with my snowflake brush and we wanna bring our brush size down. Now, we have our brush tip shape. This is the snowflake, it's going to always be this shape, but you can always make these larger and so smaller just like any other brush. So as I bring my brush size down, there we go. Now as I paint around, we can see we've got snowflakes that are really far away from our image. And these are going to be our background snowflakes. There we go, that looks really good. Now we can create a new layer on top of that and I can use my close bracket key to make my snowflakes quite a bit larger. And as I paint around, we can see we've got snowflakes now here in the foreground in our really cool snowflake shape. That looks awesome. Now let's create one more layer and I can make my brush even larger and this should be like snowflakes right next to the camera. There we go. Looking good. And if you don't like something like this one is like, meh, kind of not that into it, just hit undo and start painting around until you get something that you do like. Or maybe you just decide, you know what, those were too large actually. So I'm gonna make some that are a little bit smaller to kind of go in between. All right, let's see if I can grab one large one in there. The cool thing about this is it is so random that it really does look like, you know, these are snowflakes falling from the sky because it, it doesn't look like you just went in with your brush tool and, you know, clicked a bunch of different times. They're so random and it does, it really takes almost no time at all to do this. You can see we've got three different layers, our background layer, and we've got our mid-ground and our foreground layer. And then you can go in here and play around with your opacity and move them around and you know you grab your move tool and do all kinds of fun stuff if you wanted to with those as well. So don't feel like you're stuck into place, but our brush is pretty much done. We've got everything we need out of our brush. I think that looks pretty good right there. All right, so now that we have our brush like pretty much created, we need to go ahead and save it out so we can use it in the future. So. Next December, we don't have to do this again. We just say, yay, I'm lazy, same brush I made last year. All right, so let's go to window. We're gonna go down here to brush, okay? And then with our brush menu, we're gonna go all the way in the top right. We see a couple lines with a down arrow. We're gonna click here and go to new brush preset. All right, and we'll just call this snow flake brush. 
Sometimes I will just put like final on there so we know like this is the final version of that brush and hit okay. All right, cool. So now anytime we wanna get back to this brush, just click, go to your brush tool. So hit B for the brush tool, then right click and all the way at the very end, you're going to see this brush. So if I hover over there, we'll see snowflake brush final. Now this is the one without any of those custom settings. So if I click on this one, let's see how that looks. All right, let's make a new layer and we'll see, this is how this one, ah, knocking over my pen. Sloppy, Aaron. There we go, this is how that looks, right? This is before we had any of those settings. Now right click and click on this one. This is after all of our really nice settings are in there. So if we wanna delete the original, just hold Alt or Option and hover right over it and there's gonna be some scissors. Just click there one time and there we go. It's deleted, we've got our real brush that we wanna use, which we are available offering. We're offering it for free on flurn.com. You can just follow the link on your screen or right down below and you can download this snowflake brush and then you can be even more lazy because you didn't even have to make it. There we go, very nice. All right guys, and that's it for creating a snowflake brush in Photoshop. Just follow these simple steps. First, you're gonna wanna find your snowflake. Now, I recommend looking at stock image websites. That way you can buy the rights to the image so you can use it on your own images. In this case, we're using Adobe Stock and we'll link to the images we used right down below. Next, you want your image size to be about a thousand pixels wide. This is perfect for creating a brush. Now, you want it to be black and white and you wanna make sure your background is completely white and you wanna make sure your brush is completely black. So we use the levels, grabbing our white point and clicking on the background and grabbing the black point and clicking on the snowflake. Next, you're gonna to wanna to go to edit and then down to define brush preset. Now, this gives us our shape, but it doesn't have any of those cool settings like scattering built into it. So then we have to go into our brush menu. So go to window, down to brush, and that's where we open up all of our settings. You can go in and play around a ton here and create a perfect brush for you. All right guys, next it's time to have some fun. Just grab that brush, make it a little bit smaller and go ahead and paint around for your background, make it larger and those are gonna be the snowflakes that are in the foreground. Just play around, have a bunch of different layers, move them around and pretty soon you're gonna have a snowflake winter wonderland of your very own. And that's it for today's episode guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a happy holidays. If you have any ideas for episodes, leave them in a comment right down below. And as always, if you like what we're doing here at Flurn and you wanna learn more for free, just click on that subscribe button on your screen. It's easy and we'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. Again, thanks so much guys. I'll Flurn you later. Bye everyone. Whew, snowflake champion. It's a shame they don't give out awards for making snowflakes because I would give all of you one after you made them. And I'd give myself one too, because this is a nice snowflake. Then we're gonna show you how to go in and change your options to then we're gonna show you then we're gonna show you how to change your brush. Alright, then we're gonna show you how to change your Alright. Cool. Then we're gonna show you how to change your brush ops. Cool. Then we're gonna show we then we're gonna go in and show you how to change your brush ops options options. Nope, that's not a word. I just do this again. I'm a little rusty. Coming back from vacation. All right, let's do it again. All good. Yes, we're all good. Plenty of bloopers, so got that.